Sorry about that. Yo, 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 what's good, YouTube? What's good? It's Stormy B Man, and I am back. Welcoming you back to another edition of Nerds on Culture with Stormy B Man. This is number 20 in the series of Nerd on Cultures. And this evening, we're going to do a review on the film Black Adam that was just released last Friday in the theaters. And what's it mean for the DCEU? For those that may not be aware of those letters, it means the DC, DC Extended Universe cinematically. So we're here to talk about that this evening. Welcome everybody out there. Smash the like button as you come into the building and get prepared for our film review on Black Adam. This is a movie that's been actually a little bit over 10 years in development and finally has made it to the theaters. Matter of fact, when Dwayne The Rock Johnson signed to play this character in the film, a character that he had always hoped to play, and it was a great deal of fan casting behind this as well. A number of people felt like he would make a tremendous Black Adam. The, the, the film has been in development for so long that when he signed to play the character, he actually had hair, people. <laughs> and the character Black Adam in the comics has hair. So it was going to be a, a little bit of a debate over whether he would wear hair and the pointy ears like the character in the comics or if he would still go ahead and rock, no pun intended, the bald <laughs> that he has. So, you know, with no further ado, let me bring my brother Drew Titan in the building as we get prepared to talk about Black Adam. <laughs> Goodness, What's man. Good, man. What's good? It was, man, I needed this film, man. Um, I needed um, to get my happy back after watching Thor Love and Thunder. You know, yeah. um, I was in the theater. And when the rock flies down, when he comes out of the tomb, my kid leans over, says, Daddy. I say, what? I think the rock is bigger than you. <laughs> Shut up. All right. I'm going to the gym as soon as I leave here. God damn it. Yeah. Great film, though. Speaking, I of flying, it. speaking of flying, I love what they did with the characters that flew in this film. They they put a different spin on flight for the characters in this film. Because, you know, everybody don't have to fly like Superman like this or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. he kind of was like standing in the air and moving, right. you know, right. um, kind of a lot like the Japanese anime characters and stuff like that which was different and it was okay because he shouldn't be like everybody else right especially for a character as is told in the film he's like 5,000 years old right you right. know what I mean so the powers that he discovered that he had that's right uh Jay Wayne citizen salute to you out there Jay Wayne says he floated yeah and 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 you know Shazam whom is the latest edition of you know, the Shazam character because Black Adam was the first. Um, Shazam only learned how to fly from watching Superman and stuff because him and Billy, you know, they, they I mean, what's the, it was the, Billy, Billy is alter, alter ego, but the other kid Billy. was teaching him, you, you got to do it like this, you know, you got to run and yeah, take yeah, it. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, so Black Adam was a little bit different. And so was Dr. Fate and Hawkman. So, Man, I let's get into it, man. Let's talk about this movie, Drew. <laughs> yeah, let's get it, man. First of all, um, I didn't realize how excited I was to see the film until I actually got in the theater and sat down. And I said, man, you know what? From the moment it started, I said, you know, this is already, um, this is the makeup. This is the makeup from, because y'all got to understand, if y'all missed our review of Thor Love and Thunder, go back and watch it. <coughs> very disappointed in that film. Very, very disappointed. And I needed this film so that um, I can get my happy back as a comic book slash animation fan slash to uh, silver screen fan. 
I needed this happy back because um, Thor Love and Thunder was just such a bad film. Bad, bad, bad film. And incidentally, um, when they did a Marvel DC crossover in the comic books, the two characters that faced off was Shazam, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, because he's really called Captain Marvel in the comics. But Shazam fought Thor, which made sense because both of them use magic and stuff. Um, but there's no face off in, in, in on the silver screen. The Shazam movie and Black Adam. Look, man, this this the rock shut shit down in this film. This film had everything. And let me be very clear. You're not don't you're not expecting Academy Award. You're not expecting an you know a super duper all-star cast. It wasn't oversaturated with um girl power. You had one, you had two women in there that played a significant role, but it wasn't oversaturated with that. Um, they didn't beat us in the head with um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it with homosexuality. They didn't beat us in the head with it, you know. Um they didn't uh they didn't uh, uh drag the story along. They left um when he was staring at the statue. They left a lot of unknown there until he told the story. We had story, we had action, we had violence with no blood. Did you notice that? Violence with no blood. And it, Black Adam is a dark character if you follow him in the comic books. But he's like the anti-hero. He's not evil. Um, but if you understand his backstory, you get why he's like that. You know, but he's not really a villain. You understand? And he kicks ass and he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman. Superman, his, other than kryptonite, he has a problem with magic. So um, we're, we're going to build up to the ending. But the possibilities at this point, and salute to Dwayne The Rock Johnson, because um, all of this, all of this is pretty much even bringing back Henry Cavill. This is his doing. And this is what we need. We need people that, actually give a shit about the characters. The Rock didn't just choose this uh, a role to make a quick buck and ride off into the sunset. Um, he, he understands the fan base. These comic book fans that, that watch their characters get converted to the silver screen. He actually gives a shit. And you have to respect that. You absolutely have to respect that. So salute to him. Um, the cast was great. I love Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate. For those of you that don't know, Dr. Fate, there's going to be another one. Dr. Fate's a chosen. Much like Green Lanterns are chosen. So there's going to be another Dr. Fate. Pierce Brosnan might not come back. I don't know. But there's going to be another one. Um, Hawkman, you're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. Sorry about that. I muted myself when I was coughing. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's probably going to come back because people loved him. You know, yeah. in that role, he was like very. I didn't see him as Pierce Brosnan. I saw him as the character he was playing. It right. was really cool. <laughs> yeah, you know? I, I, I loved it, man. Hawkman in the comic books notoriously has been a white male. They made him a black male. Um, I didn't bat an eye. I mean, that's just a small, small critique when they change things like that. You know, when they made the Fantastic Four movie. I said, Johnny Storm is not black. Why are they doing this? You know, yeah. um, you know, they, they need to leave certain things alone. But mm -hmm. I, I could dig it. Hawkman was dope. You know, um, they didn't give you any story behind any of the characters. They it gave you brief stories. Brief stories. Um, did you notice the Fonz was in the movie? Yeah, I saw him there. Yeah, yeah. I was, was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Henry Wink Winkler, that's his name, right? Henry yeah. Winkler. Um, uh, you know. He's going to come back somehow. Um, and, and by but, the way, as we give our, our thoughts on this film this evening, there will be spoilers. I just took a moment out to write it in the title of the show for tonight. There will be spoilers. And we don't intend to spoil it for those who haven't seen it. If you, if you do intend on seeing the movie, come back and watch us after that. But we're going to talk about the movie because we are both excited for the experience of what Dwayne The Rock Johnson was able to put together here. You guys have no idea 
what he did and bringing this character to screen, some of the uh, moves that he has looked to make beyond behind the scenes for things to progress forward. Uh, Drew just mentioned, such as having Henry Cavill being brought back as Superman. We talked about it in a different show where Warner Brothers had actually fired Henry Cavill. They just didn't say it, but he was never going to make another Superman film as long as that past regime that is no longer there since Discovery took over Warner Brothers, they were never going to put him in another film. And they were even going to go the route of bringing a Supergirl character by by um, defyingly uh, doing away with Cavill. And the reason, I, I got a little more detail on that now, uh, Drew, from the last time we spoke on the air about this. And I sent you something earlier. I don't know if you had a chance to look at that. Yeah, I didn't get a chance. I, I, I sent I you know, a couple yeah. of links today. Two different things, but kind of still along the same line of these comic book news. But um, Warner Brothers wanted him to do some cameos, but he was asking for an increase in salary. Mm -hmm. Not just because he recognizes his value playing Superman, but because he's in demand now. It's like he, you know, we talked about it before we went live, the, the man from Uncle. The Mission Impossible films, the 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 uh, the Wisher, all of those productions. Plus, he's he's coming back in the next Mission Impossible too, I think. And um, he he's he's doing very well for himself, and he wants to be compensated for you know what he's accomplished. And do you realize it's almost been it's been like eight years ago since he played Superman? So it's it's like really. And they they didn't respect that. They wanted him to do these cameos and stuff like that, but they didn't have a different project in development for him. So basically he was going to be working for little or nothing because it is, it's not contractual obligation. So the fact that he has a great relationship with The Rock and The Rock's ex-wife, who's his manager, uh, you know, The Rock was able to pull some strings and get some things done. But it's unbelievable how these suits, they stand in the way of stuff. They stood in the way of Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, Batman versus Superman, Justice League. They they, they ruined those films. Let me the take Suicide it back for Squad, a second. David Ayer's Suicide Squad got ruined by those producers. Do you know he has an Ayer's cut, like the, the Snyder cut for, for uh, Batman versus it. Superman? I, I didn't see it. I heard of it. Yeah, and, and they're in negotiations now that it may be coming because there was far more Joker footage that was shot for that film that had backstory with him and Harley Quinn and the rest of the Suicide Squad. The, 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 those execs, man, they were, they were just with an ax slicing up those. That's why those films weren't doing well because they weren't the finished product of the directors. Let me take it a step back, Stormy. Did you say they were going to try and finagle like a Supergirl in there? Yes. D Listen, <laughs> the Flash movie. Hold on. The Flash movie is complete. It's been complete. But they pulled it off of the schedule to be, to, to, uh, be released because the deal that The Rock worked out, Superman is going to be in The Flash. So they had to do some reshoots. This isn't even about Ezra Miller because he done he done fucked off his career. Now he's done. They're gonna recast Flash for for the second film, but they had brought uh, Michael Keaton back to play the old Bruce Wayne, right? Because it's gonna be kind of a take on Flashpoint or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But the thing was, they were doing this to really changed the DCEU because they didn't want Ben Affleck back and they didn't want Henry Cavill back. Can you believe that? It's like they didn't want either of those guys back. Now, both of them have done reshoots for the Flash film. So when it does eventually get released, we're going to see them in that film. And the Supergirl character will be in that movie too, but she won't have the role that she originally had that they wanted to push forward without Henry Cavill. 
it's amazing what they decide. It's like this old guy, not not old in age, but the guy who was the exec at Marvel. That after Iron Man three was done, he told Kevin Feige to recast Tony Stark. He's like, because we're not going to pay Robert Downey Jr. And Kevin Feige was like, are you crazy? Tony Stark is a huge part of what we're doing going forward. It was like, we need the Tony Stark character in there. We'll recast him. Kevin Feige went around that guy and went to speak to some other executives in the company, and they booted that dude off of the films and kicked him back down into the television division, which is why Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. began to tank because... Kevin Feige was originally over that and everything, but when they bumped him back down to TV, he separated it from, he made it all the stories going forward that's not connected to the films anymore. So that's what happened with Agents of Shields. If you guys watch that show on a regular basis and you start wondering like, why are they doing some of this weird stuff with Agents of Shields and stuff like that? That's why that guy who was the executive got booted off the films, he went down to the TV division and start messing up down there. He didn't believe in women having prominent roles. And, you know, that's just the sexism in him. But he also didn't feel that if, 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 if something that in his mind couldn't sell toys, he didn't want to do it. His old biggest thing was selling toys. It's that's the old school way of thinking. Um, that was, that was, a, he's, 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 he's what I call Saturday morning minded. You know, you, you you market a toy, you market a cartoon, and the cartoon has to be able to sell a toy, and you, you know the whole schmeal. You know, a Saturday morning serial type motherfucker. You know, um, but can you imagine if the end of the film, look, spoiler alert, y'all. If that wasn't Superman standing there and it was Supergirl from the TV series, wouldn't you have been like, all right, but what the fuck, man? Why, why couldn't that be Superman? No, what they were going to do, and this was part of that information that I sent you today, they were going to show another headless Superman with the Henry Cavill suit on. Like he did uh, in Shazam? Like they did in Shazam. Yeah. And and that was supposed to be Henry Cavill in Shazam. but And speaking some dialogue. But be, be, those suits were like, no. On the Peacemaker, at the end, when they showed the Justice League standing yeah. out there, yeah. The yeah. Superman yeah. in the sky. Yeah. That was supposed to be Henry Cavill's Superman, too. The exec said, just darken him out. Don't show his face. They're crazy, bro. Those people are freaking crazy. Power-hungry mongrels, man. And let me tell you something. DC has an opportunity now because, and I'm a, I'm a huge Marvel guy, but Marvel Phase 4 has been the absolute fail. And yes. DC has an opportunity now to... Right now, they're, they're behind. They have yeah. an opportunity now with their productions to just jump ahead before this, because this Marvel Phase 5 is going to be the shit. I have a firm believe it's going to be the shit, but they 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 can't drop the ball. I, well, this is a great thing, and it's, mm-hmm. it's a tremendous segue into, you know, because we're talking Black Adam tonight primarily. The Rock says this film, success or not, is the first phase is kicking off the first phase of the new DCEU. In other words, everything that they're doing going forward, not only will it will it be their universes be connected, but the people who were anchors because these new executives, they want Cavill, they want Gal Gadot, they want uh Jason Momoa and and like I said Ezra effed up his career and and um, uh, they want Ben Affleck. So Ben Affleck has actually signed on to do more Batman projects, believe it or not. Now we might even get Batman versus, uh, what's his name, uh, that uh, Joe Magalanaio was going to play. Uh, the, the guy that's like Deadpool. Uh, De- oh, Deathstroke. Uh, Deathstroke. Deathstroke. Deathstroke, yeah. yeah. Joe Magliano, he may be coming back to play Deathstroke, and we might get that Batman film, Batman versus Deathstroke. And check this out. You remember me telling you about Matt Reeves stealing some of Ben Affleck's ideas for the, yeah. that, the yeah. Batman film he did, right? Because people, that's critically acclaimed, wasn't it? 
a lot of that writing, a lot of that development from that came from Ben Affleck when he was writing and was going to direct his own Batman film. But those executives pulled him off of it. You see, they basically ran him out, ran him out of the studio. And the reason that you don't hear the actors complain and stuff is because they have to work in Hollywood. So if they rail against these studio execs, the, the studio execs can hurt their careers. You know, what's the, what, what's the studio execs end game if they fuck this off? What is the end game? Dude, they don't care. It's just like they didn't want Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League cut to get released at all. They were trying to stump it out. But that campaign for it. Release the Snyder cut, just like the hashtag recast T'Challa. It meant, dude, it, you, it had million people behind it. It's like people wanted to see this. Do you know that before the, there's a certain part of the year that they get like their bonuses. The studio yeah. execs get bonuses. They wanted all these productions cut, stopped, halted and stuff so that the money would slow down on that and that they could reap more benefits for themselves. So when, when, the, when the merger with uh, Discover was taking over and they were going to be out, some of them wanted to just take the money out of everything and leave. They were something else, bro. Nino Brown in it up in this joint. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> didn't make no sense. But I, I'm sorry. You know, I don't want to get too much off on that. Let's get back to the film, man. Uh, I saw the film Thursday night. Uh, I thought that it was a damn good time at the movies watching a comic book movie. You know what? It, you know what I liken it to. And this particular film gets a lot of crap today. But when it was in the theaters, I loved it. Spawn. You remember Spawn? Yeah, yeah when, yeah. when Spawn got released in the theaters, I liked it. For its time that it got released. You you understand? It was like it wasn't what McFarlane really wanted and all of that. Yeah, but it was different. It was something different and everything. It was a little hokey and pokey, but that was before we started getting the good movies. Right. You yeah, know what I, I mean? I, I feel, yeah, yeah. Because even a, Blade I, came after after that. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a fan of Spawn. I got Spawn number one. I'm a big fan of Todd McFarlane, got pictures with him. And um, I followed the comics so closely that by the time the, the, the movie was released, I was disappointed, but they still I still paid to see it. I was disappointed. The, the casting was all wrong, you know, but that's and, something And else. they said that they were going to do another one, and that's been in developmental hell for a long time because I think the new one was supposed to have Jamie Foxx in the lead role. Yeah, it, and it, 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 that, that character is a very dark that that's a very dark story, man. Yeah, and the people he meets along the way, very, dark, very dark story, man. And they just, it was too bright for me, and it was too clowny to me. And but you know, I understand. But um, I, I get it. This this thing, but Black Adam, I had a ball. I had to get my happy back because Thor: Love and Thunder left me sucking my teeth. Like, oh my god, yeah, there was so many. There was so many using the theater watching Love and Thunder. I, I was like this. I had several one of the. I have several of those during that film. I'm like, wait, he's using the axe to open up this gate, and your answer is to throw the shit in the space. What? That that's your answer, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. One that's of crazy. the things that I looked at regarding Thor: Love and Thunder is like the lack of uh, fleshing out. The story. This dude, Taika Waititi, man, I hope he don't never get another job on comic book films. I don't care if he do other stuff, but keep him away from my beloved comic book movies, man, because they're not about being silly. They're not about jokes and, 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 and you know, uh, taking stabs and stuff like that. It's about characters that people care about. And Jane Foster... You know, when you got an actress like Natalie Portman, you got to take advantage of what she's capable of doing in front of the camera. And her her character, just like in the comics, is dying from cancer. Yeah. And when Milner calls her, because basically that's what happens. 
and it's not even shown in the film. They show her looking at one of the, the, the books and she goes over and she looks and starts reading. But Milner calls you, you know, just like Thor could call Milner. There's an interaction between whom, whomever is the, has the power of Thor and it transferred to Jane. And I think part of that was because Thor and Jane spent a lot of time together that they kind of showed in the film in between everything else we've seen over the years cinematically with them that they did have, they spent time together. Right. And Milner, you know, Thor, actually, there's a scene in the movie where he says, watch out over her. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what he said. And when she goes to New Asgard, supposedly where that memorial is, where Thor's hammer Milner is, it's all broken in pieces from what Hela did. They didn't even move it. They just built the shrine around it because you can't lift it. You can't lift it, yeah. Because of the enchantment. When she got close to it, it reassembled itself and came to her hand and she went up in the air and everything. And they actually filmed all of this, but they didn't include it in the film. And it's like, how do you not show this? Because all you got in the film was her looking in the book and closed the book up. Then they showed, they showed that stupid play that the new Asgardians was doing, reenacting other things, which it was funny the first time around, but why are you doing it again? It You're telling the, the same already, joke man. with a different line of dialogue. Come on, man. And then how about this? Tessa Thompson playing Valkyrie. When Thor is back there helping them defend the village and stuff with the kids and all of that stuff. And he sees somebody fighting and he's like, who is that? And, she looks at him and says, oh, you're going to love her. That's the only line that, that referred to it possibly being Jane. It's like, no, I mean, come on, man. The they they could have done man. a better job. Taika Waititi sucks, bro. He sucks. sucks. Jane Wayne Citizen says he hasn't watched it and he got Disney Plus. Bro, it's, it's about two hours of your life you won't get back. Don't be us. I don't waste my money. You know what I'm saying? You're not missing nothing, brother. Skip it. Skip it. They just, they just effed off uh, Zeus and everything in that film. They made Zeus a damn uh, pervert. What we call? pervert. Yeah. Pervert. But the, the best part about the movie was when it was ending, when, when Hercules came down. Because he, he's going to pop up in phase five, but they got to do right by him now. Stop with the clown shit. Let's get somewhat serious. It's a little... Little jokey joke here and there, but you know, there's some serious shit we're dealing with here, man. But even if they're gonna bring Hercules into the story, did you see that actor they cast as Hercules? Yeah, I saw it. The dude didn't have a he didn't have a muscle on his body, and I'm like, Her Hercules is supposed to be he's buff. like the Hulk. Yeah, he's supposed to be buff. And and wait a minute, did you see Zeus in Zack Snyder's Batman versus Superman? No. Not uh yeah, because Diana told the story. Or was yeah, that Justice, Justice League? Just yeah, it, was, it, was, it was Justice League. Justice um, League. But the guy they had playing Zeus. Did you see that dude? He's a professional yeah. bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he looked great. He didn't have a lot of dialogue. I think he spoke a couple of lines, but the whole point of it was was like he looked like a powerful being and he was shooting those blasts out of his hands and stuff like that. Yeah. But that's just like looking at The Rock. No padding in his suit or nothing. That was all him. And so when he yeah. got physical with people, you could believe that that's him. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know, man. Some Something about where Marvel has gone. I don't, I don't know if Kevin Feige got a little... I don't know. I ain't never heard nobody talk about no wife or nothing. I, I ain't trying to accuse him of anything. But he done start letting his hair hang down a little long, ain't he? And it's like, man, you get back to the what was successful and stop fooling around in this foolishness because that's that was the other thing that I sent you today that 
it was a panel of guys who did the review of the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumanium uh, trailer that got released today. Yeah. That was a panel discussion. I sent you that link. There was a guy on that panel. I'm actually subscribed to their channel, those guys. Mm -hmm. There was a guy on that panel when they asked what was wrong. Do you think that Black Panther Wakanda Forever is going to have problems? He said, absolutely. He said, first of all, they spent all of this time developing the, the Black Panther and establishing King T'Challa as someone. The father-son relationship, the whole fact of how he protects over the kingdom, he presides over a nation of people, and how he's going to go national and deal with the world and stuff like that. You've established all of these great traits and characteristics. And because the actor that played the character passed away, you just decide, well, we'll switch it over to the women now. You totally undermine what you establish, and he says once the people because he talked about the blacks that were you know so happy with the character in the first film he says once they get privy to what has happened here that's when the bottom gonna fall out because people is you know sometimes people have to actually see something yeah. and realize it to conceptualize oh this is actually happening Once they do that, and I love this comment. I actually wrote in their chat. I said, dude, that's an excellent assessment. of it." He broke it down, Drew. It took about five minutes for him to explain what he was saying. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just giving a short version. But he was Johnny on the spot with what he was saying because it's like you, you would rather they not make the movie at all than to go the route that they've decided to go and try to hide behind saying this is paying homage to Chad Bozeman. No! No! Chad Bozeman would resent that. His family has resented that. So you're actually falsely hiding behind something that the people don't even support. But you take your butt out there and you recast General Thunderbolt Ross Easily. Because William Hurt passed away. He's not even as significant a character as King T'Challa. Notice how I say King T'Challa. And you recast him with another veteran actor that's respected in Hollywood. Huh? And 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 and, and you decide not no, 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 no. And, and look at you got the what was great about Black Panther and the Kingdom of Wakanda is you had the door of Milaji, right? A female army. That's great. Now it's all just female. It's the black Amazons. This is such an easy fix. Because we got three fucking Spider-Men. They're all Peter Parker. From different universes. But they're the same guy. This is such an easy fix. You take a T'Challa. Because if I'm not mistaken in the comic book. Different worlds from di from different timelines was getting destroyed. Take a T'Challa from one of those Earths and bring him over to ours and say, "Yo, look, I was the last one to escape. Everybody on my planet's gone. My Wakanda, my Earth, gone. Well, our king is gone. So you're T'Challa, but you're not our T'Challa because we lost our T'Challa. Well, hey, according to Doctor Strange, there are no mistakes. Here I am. Boom, T'Challa's back." This is such an easy fix, man. Easy. Yeah. Just like the Doctor Strange in the uni in, in the multiverse of madness, the Doctor Strange that died, remember? Mm -hmm. And uh the one that they buried on that roof. Yeah. That came through with old girl. Uh uh, you could bring him from that universe. Cause that universe was being destroyed. Being destroyed. Yes. Have him roaming around the streets, but like, yo, who are you? I'm T'Challa. You are? Yeah, my universe got destroyed. There's no one left. I'm just here. This is an easy fix. And you know what? By public demand, it's up to us to fix this shit because it's become abundantly clear that if we leave it to them and say nothing, they're going to do whatever the fuck. You can't just force feed me nothing. I appreciate what they've done 
you know, CGI today has literally brought my childhood to life. And I appreciate that. But you know what? You got to respect my dollar now because I'm paying for this. Don't violate me like that. Absolutely. Don't throw man. homosexuality around. There was a goddamn dumpling God in a goddamn throw over. The dumpling. Yes, a dumpling in a bowl of soup. A dumpling God. I'm like, what? Out the of fuck? all the characters that you could have brought into that film, like Beta Ray Bill, they just totally just went. And didn't we all think that that's where we were heading? That we were going to see Beta Ray, Beta Ray Bill at some point? They Beta just Ray Bill, out. you know, we, we still, man, I'm just upset. I'm just upset. And the possibilities are endless. And the people that they're getting are not fans of the goddamn uh, uh, comic books like, like how we are. You read that super chat, bro. Yeah. Salute to Josiah Matthews out there with the super chat. He says, I just respect the LDBC, Drew. You and Art Cooked, B, you stay cooking. Much respect to y'all. Appreciate Salute. everything y'all do. Salute. Appreciate Salute. you, man. Salute to you for that, man. But listen, I think that that's a great idea, what you said, but you cannot leave this character <laughs> off the table. And how about this Namor casting? <laughs> I'm not sold on that. Because first of all, you know, the guy that's playing him, this guy, Tanakh something. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, he's been body shamed, you know, because Namor looks like The Rock or you know, some of these other guys who... Yeah, are his measurements in the state. comic, uh, he's a he's a big guy. He's like 6'5 or something in the comic yeah. book. But this guy, Tanakh, is nowhere near any of those dimensions, not in any kind of physical shape like that. And people are like, you know, in that one scene that they show him in the trailers coming up out of the water where he's the camera's on his back, they talk about him having a dad bod because he, he don't have no muscles or nothing. And I'm like, you waited all this time to bring Namor to the screen. I mean, Aquaman is played by Jason Momoa, and Jason Momoa got in good shape to play Aquaman. His body don't look like that all the time, but he got in shape to play the character. Y'all just let this dude get off the sofa and put some damn pointy ears on him and some damn jewelry around his neck and say, okay, can you swim? You know what I'm saying? It's like, really? What you doing? Here's 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 the thing. The name was 62320. So he's my height, but he's 320 pounds of pure muscle. Uh, another thing is you would figure after being in the ocean and all you're doing is swimming, he'd have wide lats. He he'd be elongated. Like um, you know who I met in real life? What's the swimmer's name? The Olympic swimmer? Phelps. Michael Phelps. Yeah. He's built weird. He's built like a fucking tree sloth. He has wide lats. His, he, he was like this. He has wide lats and his arms look long and he has a very, very tiny waist and his legs don't look like they fit with the rest of his body. But the motherfucker, could, he'll swim the shit out of you. He'll just swim you. He'll swim circles around you. Um, You would think that there'd be a little CGI with the, uh, uh, um, the Atlanteans, but if you read the story, Namor's also like the first mutant. Mutant, yes. He's the first one. Um, that's why he got the wings on his ankles. But look, man, at this point, I don't know how maybe should they should have got him on the uh you remember the, the Spartan workout regiment? Yeah. All those but brothers. See, but but you mean to tell me, because I don't think that was a last minute casting. No, you know he had he had about a year. Yeah, or so more than so that. It's to, like, why you you couldn't do nothing better than that? <laughs> and, I mean, and, look, and listen, no, I, I'm gonna say this because <laughs> we critique these things now. It's like yeah. you don't get a pass. We just said Black Adam is not out there for best picture. 
or Academy Award performance from The Rock. Mm -hmm. But what it is, is it's a damn good comic book movie mm -hmm. that entertains us for what we like to go to see these films for. And we can't see the next time he gonna be on screen. Whether he's facing Kal-El or he's facing Shazam, Captain Marvel. We want to see it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You know, I ain't going to lie. When they show that scene, Namor coming out the water, and it showed like his, like his back, I'm not going to lie. The first thing I did say was, where's his definition? He's in Thank the fucking you. water swimming all day. They got to be built different. They got to... Look at an Olympic... Look at a collegiate athlete that swims. Their bodies are different. Their bodies are different because they're in the pool all day. They're in the pool swimming. Professional athletes, period. Their bodies are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I told I you... I remember when I saw Ben Gordon. I told, I, I told you the Ben Gordon story, right? Yeah. I, remember, I didn't know it was him. Know, I'm here in Chicago, you know. I remember when I saw Ben Gordon. I was on the bus. This is right downtown here in Chicago, not far from my job. And I was on the bus going home and he was walking across the street on Michigan Avenue and he crossed in front of the bus that I was on. And I looked at him because, you know, he's only about six one. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. that tall at all. But he looked built for a little dude, you know, in the NBA, six one is a little guard. Yeah, yeah. but he was built. And I was like, damn. Ben Gordon, I because I had I've been to the Bulls game, but I never was that close to the court. You know, I was in the midsection and stuff right, like right, that. Right, I didn't right. have court side seats. So I'm looking at the dude because he was like 10 feet away walking outside the bus. I'm like, damn, he's built. You know what I mean? Muscles cut and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, shirt tight fit. I'm looking at the dude. I'm like, that's an athlete. Yeah. And then there's another dude that played for the Bulls. He's not on there anymore. The one that got into the fight in the NBA. Um, he got punched in the face or something. They traded him and the guy he fought. They were on the Bulls. This was a few years ago when I was kind of watching the NBA. But it's they, they, neither guy's on the team anymore. But anyway, I saw that dude. He was jogging in the neighborhood because I think he, he, he lives around there somewhere. Or at that time when he was in Chicago, he did. And he was about 6'8". Ron Artest. Huh? Ron Artest. No, 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 this is uh, this is a new generation of Bulls players. That's, those are the older guys. Uh, this, was, this had to be like 2017, 2016, something like that. I can't think of the guy's name because he's a European dude. But he was jogging. And I said, damn, that's a tall guy. He's a white guy? Yeah, European. No Sioni? Not Andreas no Sioni? No. Okay. But this guy was on the Bulls team, but they got into a fight, mm -hmm. and he got mm -hmm. punched in the jaw. I can't think of his name now. See, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't watched the sport in so long, I don't forgot. The, I, right, right, the, right, right. The right, point right, I'm right, trying right. to make is the guy was tall as hell. And he was, like, built a certain kind of way. He wasn't the average dude jogging down the street. You know what I mean? I could tell yeah. he was a professional athlete. And by the time he, he ran past me, and he was about maybe 30, 40, 50 feet away, I was like, oh, that's that guy that played for the Bulls. But he was, he was out for a morning run. I'm like, damn, you know? But, again, that's when you're looking at somebody that's an athlete, these are the kind of things that you see. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that, yeah. My my Ben Gordon story was um because he's from right up here in Mount Vernon, and he came down. I forgot where the hell I was. We was playing a pickup game, and him and two of his friends got on the court, and we were just you know we wasn't playing hard. But then towards when the game got cut, game came, the, when the game got tight, they wanted to win, and they kept throwing him the ball, and I called myself guarding him, and he started playing for real. When he jumped, I'm jumping with him now. We're almost the same height. But I'm trying to jump with him. The bottom of his feet were right here. Hmm. I couldn't guard him. He was jumping too high to shoot a jump shot. I couldn't guard him. I could not get up that high. I said, what the fuck? And it wasn't until the game was over 
because he really didn't shoot the whole game. But it wasn't until when he did shoot, it was hitting. There was no net on the rim. It was going through the rim. He was hitting everything. He had like four in a row. And I said, what the fuck? Then it dawned on me. I looked at him. I said, that's fucking Ben Gordon. He had on a fitted cap too. I didn't know it was him. I said, yeah, very motherfucking funny. That was some bull stuff, man. That was some bullshit. He was playing. He 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 got drafted that year. He got drafted that year. That was some crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff. Yeah, I think that kid's name that I couldn't think of on the Bulls because I said 2016, 2017 around that time, Nikola Miritek. Ah, hey, there you go, a- a- Anthony Bolton. I just looked up the team, and Anthony Bolton wrote it in the uh, chat as well. I remember him. But that's Nick Nikola uh, Miritek, and he got into yeah. a fight on the team, and the and the guy punched him, and they traded both of them. They traded the other guy that punched him first, and then they got rid of Miritek later. But that was like like the last time that I was watching the Bulls at all, and that's many years ago. So, but yeah. But uh, yeah, man, this this uh, Black Adam film, it introduced the uh, Justice Society. I thought that that was kind of cool because that's extending the universe as well. Because eventually they can tell these characters' backstory. Um, what's the lady's name? The girl that can control the weather. I forgot her name. Make make the wind and the hurricane. I forgot her name. I, I thought her character was kind of interesting because she must be based like, uh, uh, you know, DC and Marvel always mirror one another's characters. Yeah. And she might be some like someone like Storm, Storm or something, yeah. but she can't yeah. she can't do everything Storm can do. But, you know, and Dr. Fate, they say that Pierce Bronson had something to do with the way that the helmet was designed because they, they said that... Um, you know, the original design that they had for the helmet kind of looked like a bag <laughs> that go over oh. your head. And Pierce Brosnan was like, no, we got to style that up a little bit. So I like the finished product. I thought he it was cool. did a good job, man. Yeah. He did a good job, man. The characters was true to life, man. And um, Hawkman, very underrated yeah, Cyclone. character. Cyclone, thanks, Jay Wayne. And, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Cyclone, that's, yeah. That's it. Um, the, uh, uh, Hawkman's a badass. He's a badass. He wasn't fucking with Black Adam, but he he was able to go toe to toe for a little bit. Um, but yeah, man. Um, the, did you know that the, the what, what is those what is the gang called? The in, inter what are they called? In inter something. Which gang? The gang that was take that took over the city. That was on the bikes. Oh, from yeah, yeah. Uh, I forget. I forget. They get. They get. Though that tech from apocalypse okay that's where the tech comes from so all of this is leading up to something but i'm so glad that the rock cared enough to do right by that character and do right by the storyline and do right by bringing back um um henry i'm glad he gave a shit enough inter gang that's what it is the inter gang yeah now uh speaking of henry the fact that uh, The Rock went through what he did to help bring Henry back to the screen. And I don't know if you were able to notice it, but the costume was a little different. It was a little brighter. It had the brighter colors of red, yellow, and blue. It was a little bit brighter than it was in the Zack Snyder films. And he had the spit curl. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. He had this fit curl. So I was like, oh, this this is, uh oh, we're going to see the real Superman now. Yep. But uh, I'm going to play that clip now, uh, Drew, right. that, that yeah. for Henry Cavill coming back and thanking the fans. Uh, this was from Henry's Instagram today, where he officially announced that uh, he is back as Superman. We have to play it from where you, where you played oh, it, Drew. Okay. Hey everyone, I wanted to wait until the weekend was over before posting this. Uh, 
because I wanted to give you all a chance to watch Black Adam. But now that plenty of you have, I wanted to make it official that I am back as Superman. And the image you see on this post and what you saw in Black Adam are just a very small taste of things to come. So uh, there's a lot to be thankful for, and I'll get to that in time. But I want to thank you guys most of all. Thank you for your support, and thank you for your patience. I promise it will be rewarded. Do you see Jim Lee right there, the first comment? No, I didn't see it. That's Jim Lee. The first comment. I can't, right there. I can't see it. I can't see what it says. Jim Lee. What does it say? It's too He's small. He's putting the praise hands there. Do the oh, replies. Okay. He said, and then look at little people. How about a small celebration of art piece to go to charity or something? Man, they, man, Jim Lee is that dude, boy. Jim Lee is that guy. When he drew Batman and Superman after he left the X-Men, woof, one of my favorite artists. Man, see, and that's what it's all about, man. It, it, it's like when you get a person that is that that's like if, imagine if 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 um Marvel Kevin Feige would have let that guy who decided that he didn't want to pay, bring Robert Downey Jr. back we wouldn't have had the performances that we got out of him for Iron Man and stuff. Superman is a hard character for a person to play and for people to receive as the character. People yeah. openly embraced this man and no one was embraced as Superman since Christopher Reeve. And they could not capitalize on that. You know, you know, this fella could have came out of nowhere and literally said, I'm Christopher Reeve's son or something. I'd have believed him because they resemble each other. Yeah, I believe in one hundred percent. Yeah, and he was a little boy on the set of, of one of those uh, near Russell Crowe or something, and and Russell Crowe had talked to him, and he was like he wanted to be an actor and this and that, and Russell Crowe just told him he said, "Well, just work at your craft and this and that," and that was back in the time when Russell Crowe was like doing Gladiator and stuff like that. I was in like the like the um, early two thousands. No, Gladiator is much older than that, bro. Gladiator, Gladiator came bro. out in the late 90s? Yeah, mid 90s or something like mid -90s. that. Mid 90s? You sure? Yeah. Yeah. Gladiator is from a long, it's been out a while. Well, we're but, in 2022, uh, so yeah. But but basically, you know, he took some tips from Russell Crowe and, and look at him now, today. And Superman is the most recognized role he'll ever play. You know what you, I mean? It, it's such an obvious character, but you can't fuck that character up. When you when you find that guy, he fits the role, man. He fits the role. And we've had several Supermen. Uh, the guy from Smallville, as a young he he fit the bill. He was as a young Clark Kent. Mm -hmm. I bought that. This new guy they got flying around. Eh, you know, whatever. But this guy, Henry, man, he he nailed it. Nailed it. You don't you don't not bring him back. You don't just you don't disrespect us like that, man. I hate man. This oh, has more no audio, but this is the trailer for Black Adam. Did you notice that they used some of that technology on him as a slave, like they did yes. for Steve Rogers when he was skinny Steve? Man, and, that was so good. Yeah, right. That was so good. They just made him look like a normal man. Your magic is weak. This scene right here was ridiculous. Oh, man. He was smoking those dudes, right? And, and here's the thing. Here's how they get away with it. There was no blood. No blood. There was no blood. No blood. And that's all I was concerned about, man. Um, Black Adam's a dark character. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, he has to have a body count somewhere, and I'm wondering how they're going to do it. And they did it perfectly. There was no blood. He was just burning people with electricity, and you got the picture. You understand? But this was, this was, man, I got everything I needed out of a superhero movie. Everything. It was enough story. Nothing was oversaturated. You had a lot of action. The boss fight at the end was, was, was stellar. This character right here, 
they didn't overdo it with her. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the ending, the end, the, the, the mid end end credit scene was perfect, man. And I love uh, the interaction between Hawkman and Adam Smasher. <laughs> he was like telling no me and you, me and you, <laughs> me and you. Man, that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. But I, you got everything from this, man. You got everything from this. This was, you know, I give this a, a out of out of five stars. I give it a hard four. Yeah. Yeah. This because was good. It, well, it's, well it's a comic book movie, bro. It's like it's it's like the pages come to life. This is what you want. And and you give them time, yes, they can they can go more detailed and, and more story with more characters and stuff like that. But for this, you had to know what you were going to the theater for, you know. Man, great film, man. I, I it was a great film. I liked it. And I needed this because I was still aggravated off of Love and Thunder. Mother F that movie. Black Adam, go see it. Go see it. I'm telling you, if I have a day off and I have nothing to do, I'll go see it again. I have no problem. Yeah. I have no problem. I have no problem. Yeah, I will uh, try to see it a second time in the theater. Um, I can't wait for it to come out on on blu-ray because you know i got the little home theater system and stuff i'd be trying to listen to that stuff crank the sound and stuff. Be watching them action scenes and stuff man I, I just sink into fantasy world with that kind of stuff but i enjoy it man i really do and I, i'm gonna I'm tell you something the rock in every movie he play he's the rock Some people may say, and I think it was even said earlier in the chat here, someone wrote that The Rock was playing The Rock. But I, for this particular character, I'm a little bit indifferent on that. I think he was born to play Black Adam because what he portrayed on the screen, that's who Black Adam is. <laughs> that, that, you know, that's who that character is. He don't got a lot of personality or nothing. He he all about smashing people and stuff like that. No you know where it comes from? It's hard to unsee The Rock when he does something because it's The Rock. He right. gets tight casted because of his size and things like that. He's naturally, he's a pretty good actor. He's naturally a funny guy. He's a funny guy. Um, but it's hard to unsee it. Right. And there was debate whether, because in the comic books, Black Adam has hair. And it right. slicked and back and he got, yeah. he got the Spock ears. Yeah. Um, they thought about going that route, but you know what the problem was, right? Two things. He the, he the, he would have either ended up looking like the Scorpion King when he did that, or when he played Hercules. You remember that? Yeah. You know, so they were like, eh, you know, I'm just gonna go with the bald head. But I was able to uh put that aside. In that film, he was Black Adam. And um the only thing they never explained, and this is just Hollywood stuff, I think they should have been talking in their native tongue the whole movie, and then periodically, because I've seen movies where they've done this, after a while they talk in that language, and then they'll say, translate it to English. But they, so it's like, you know that they're talking in their language. Yeah. Because they never explain how the fuck he gets out of a tomb speaking English. Right. You know? <laughs> and they spoke a language. You understand? Right. They should have just been doing that and then blended it into English so we can understand it. Yeah, like th the only part that you saw of that was when he come up out of the tomb in there and he, right. when he said, your your magic is weak. You know, when he was talking to those guys then, he was talking in his native tongue then. But, you know, but yeah, man. That's, that's he, a small, that's not even a gripe. That's just something minor I picked up. Yeah. But uh, if you ask me, I think DC oh, is they they on the roll with you know what they were able to do with Wonder Woman, what they were able to do with Aquaman. Those were pretty good films. Wonder Woman eighty four. 
suffered from those people interfering again. But uh, yeah. Aquaman kind of made it past. Aquaman, in a sense, was kind of like Black Panther. It was more successful than anybody thought it was going to be. Yeah. And that director from the Fast and Furious, the, the Asian director, I forget his name at the moment. Forgive me. I don't remember his name, but he directed the first Aquaman film. He did a good job. He did a good job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like the special effects. I like how they yeah. handled them talking underwater and stuff like that. See, that's one of the things that, okay, they beat Marvel to that underwater character. So it's like now whatever Marvel does, they're not even, Namor is no longer a part of Atlantis because of, of you know, Aquaman got out there first. You know, yeah, maybe if they fast. can go ahead and bring Joe Magliano back and, and, and play that play that death stroke, you know, it may put Deadpool to shame. I'll tell you what they did in the uh with Namor in the Fantastic Four cartoon from the 1960s series. He wasn't from Atlantis, he was from a place called Pacifica. I was like, wow, that's a nice little flip. Pacifica. I was like, oh, okay, I got it. Yeah, and salute to Jane Wayne Citizen. He says uh, he has magical wisdom. Forgot about that. So he has magic. So you know he can learn English in like two seconds. So I forgot about that. Oh, you talking about uh, uh Black, Black, Black Adam? Black Adam. Yeah, he has magical wisdom. Yeah, he has the same powers that Shazam has. Same ones. But man. He said Gladiator came out in 2000. That, that's, that sounds about right. So we are now officially almost 23 years later. So, yeah, that's about right. That's about right, man. So, man. But I really dig this movie. I recommend it. I recommend it. I recommend it. I recommend it. I was very... I left that theater full. And especially the end credit scene, I was like, ah, I felt like I ate a meal. I was like, Yes. This is what I'm talking about. Marvel better straighten up, man. Because salute to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He did right by the core audience. He did right by us. He really did right by us with this film. And I appreciate him holding it off and not doing a rush job. And I he takes his craft seriously. And what he does, I see a lot of these actors, they'll listen to the fan base. You know, and you can tell when, when, a, when a director doesn't know shit. You remember the first Hulk movie with Eric Bana? Mm -hmm. They got Ang Lee to direct it. And I'm like, look, man, I appreciate the CGI, but then I read in an interview, Ang Lee was not he, he was not familiar with the Hulk character. So I said, why the fuck would you go get this guy to do a goddamn Hulk movie? Hmm. And it did well because that was when when that first movie came out. When that Hope movie came out, that was when we was we 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 uh broke a new level in C in CGI. So we ran to go see it. And right. now I look I look back at that film, I said, man, that was Shrek part two. Because at the time Shrek 2 ain't really come out. So I was calling that shit Shrek 2. I didn't like that. My gosh. But they got it right in the Incredible Hope, which the Incredible Hope was actually part of the MCU. They got it right. When I saw The Incredible Hulk in the theaters, I came away feeling about it like I felt about Black Adam because yeah. you were able to see Hulk smash up some stuff and yeah. tear a car in half and use it as boxing gloves. And stuff. Man, that was incredible, <laughs> man. That, that was, was great, man. And I know those were CGI characters, but still, I was in the movie. You know what I mean? I was like, get him, Hulk. You it know? was incredible. It was incredible, and man. Listen, just to show you, the difference between the Russo brothers fucking up with Hulk in the Infinity Saga, uh, in that movie, when Abomination stabbed Hulk in the chest with that bone in his elbow. Yeah. When the Hulk finished and wrapped that chain around his neck, he took that bone and stabbed the Abomination back. In back. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You got to get your get back, right? Yeah. Yeah. They blew that man when they didn't they didn't let Hulk get his get back. I'm like, cause I, I I was like saying to myself, I wasn't even gonna say nothing. I was like, well, I know when they had the next movie, Hulk gonna get him back. They never let the Hulk get his get back, man. 
Now you got people that. running around saying, no, 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 Thanos is really stronger than the Hulk. If you read the book, that's not true. In the book, Thanos is afraid of the Hulk. There's, there's he, a couple of things that he's afraid of, and Hulk is one of them. Because yeah. Hulk really has, uh, he's an anomaly. He has unlimited strength. They, they got something, God Hulk, in the comics now. I mean, he's reached that level, man. He's the only character that picked up Mjolnir. He picked the shit up. You're not supposed to do that. He 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 stomped the earth and split the earth. World breaker. Uh, yeah. World breaker Hulk. I mean, come on, man. Thanos ain't want no smoke with him. And you just thought he was going to get his get back. I thought I was going to see a scene where he runs up on Thanos and, and is a little hesitant because he's thinking like Banner now. And Thanos starts kicking his ass. And then he, then he turns into the real Hulk. And then he starts gl glowing and starts stomping and shaking shit. That's what I thought they were going to do. But another blown opportunity. I guess Scarlet Witch was, was good enough. Fly down. And, you took everything from me. He's like, I don't even know you. And he was only, she almost killed his ass right there. I was like, man, downplay the hope. Now he has a child out of wedlock. <laughs> now, yeah, dead beat Hulk. Dead beat, <laughs> <laughs> dead beat dad Hulk. Yeah. Oh my God, man. <laughs> Why did they do that? <laughs> hey, Scott came. He's like, Mom said. Your your child support payments ain't been coming through. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, man! <laughs> Thank God, Phase Four is over, she, man. She told she told Scott before she died. She said, "You go find that worthless son of." He, he lives on Earth. Him. Earth, motherfucker. <laughs> Earth. That's why, that's why Banner didn't want to change that to the Hulk. Because he was hiding. No! He said he wasn't going to come back. Yo, she sent the whole... She sent the... <laughs> she sent them people to Earth to try and blast them. Yeah, you old child support, dude. You better bring your ass back there. <laughs> Knocked his shit off a cliff. <laughs> oh my god, man. Dead beat. Yeah, David Scott. Dead, dead beat Hulk. <laughs> Can someone draw man. a picture of him sitting in court and his, his cousin's defending him? And he's like, oh. I didn't know he existed. <laughs> well, you got back child support of $8 trillion. Hulk <laughs> smash! He started tearing up the that, courtroom. That's what turns him into world break. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> your child support in terms of the world break home. No support. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my stomach hurt. <laughs> oh shit. Oh hey. no, Jane Wayne Citizen at the end of the <laughs> She Hope. I hate that series too. He ended up going back to Sakar, finds out he has a son. And he brought him back to Earth. He shows up <laughs> at the end of the series. Uh, he said, Hulk <laughs> smash visitation, right? <laughs> Look, oh, I wanted to show God. something before we get out of here that basically shows what these movies really mean, man. And you got to be able to embrace them for what they are. I don't know if you've ever seen this video before. You probably have. If you haven't, you probably heard about it. But I'm going to show this video real quick, and I want everybody to enjoy this, man, because this right here is something special, bro. It's something special. And uh, check this out here. I'm going to play it. This is a little kid watching Man of Steel for the first time when uh, he learns to fly. Check this out. It's one of the most wonderful reaction videos I've ever seen in my life. And that's what these films do for all of us, if you're a nerd like we are. Aha! Look at that. Ah. Ah. 
Yep. You're adorable. Do it again? Yeah, do it again. <laughs> Man, I remember the first time I saw that video. I saw it uh, <clears throat> a few years ago. But uh, that it just touched me, you know, because that's the child in all of us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what these films do for us. When we go to the movies, that's what we're supposed to become. The childlike. Tra the trade-off to that is... Now you got to watch that young homie from jumping off the couch. You got to lock all the doors, lock all the windows. <laughs> yeah. Those kids at that age, they don't understand gravity. Yeah. You know, but um, we get it, man. I mean, that, that's, come on, man. If you and by watching... the way, that scene, that scene right there, uh, Zack Snyder understood exactly that principle when he was making that movie that I said that John Favreau had when he made the first Iron Man. When yeah. he suited up and he went on his first flight, both directors feel like when you go through a moment like that, you have to take the audience on that journey. You can't just gloss over those moments. You have right. to allow the people to be a part of that journey. And you actually saw it work to perfection with that small child. Yeah, that was awesome. You yeah. know, um, these movies are about capturing the hearts of the fans. You actually, especially us, we're older, but we grew up watching these things and we still watch them. So Absolutely. where it seems like we're being very critical, I mean, we are, um, but we're the audience, you know, we got kids that want to go to see these films and, you know, the kids think it's dope that we can have an intellectual conversation with things that they're into. And right. It's like, nah, you know, this character is actually older than you. And let me give you some history on it. You understand? My father still does that. He he can tell you the, the history of Marvel and DC and the characters. He told me when we went, we, we went to go see um the Hulk is my dad's favorite character, like ever. And when we went to see Avengers, man, I already had saw it already. So I took him to see it. Stormy, the scene when Banner rolls up on the damn motorcycle and the beast starts coming and he says, Banner, don't you think you need to suit up? He says, no, I'm all right. He said, he said, now it's time to get angry. He said, I'm always angry. And when he turned to the Hulk and punched that thing, the audience erupted. And I looked at my dad. My dad was sitting there like, <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. If I could have had my camera out, he was like, and my, my father is like a Vulcan. He could be excited, but, but don't you know, so much. Spot, nothing. Yeah. It's like, hey, how are you? Yeah, he's like that. You know? Dude, and, I'm like, and the hey, Hulk stopped that thing with one hand. One hand. One Punched hand, it. he stopped it. And then when he screamed and they did, they, they circled the camera, you see all the Avengers. That, that's Hollywood magic. That's that, that was comic book right there. That was magic. Those Dude, scenes. That, that was one of the, the movie moments you can never forget when you were in the theater and you saw the Avengers. That was the Avengers assemble moment. Yeah, yeah. And then the Loki scene. Oh, it was all dramatic. Man. He's like, I am a god, you dope creature. And I should not be bullying. He grabbed his ass and slammed him all around the thing. <laughs> I didn't hear shit at I was like, oh my God. And I looked at my father. There's only a few things that make my father laugh. That scene right there, he was killed over holding his stomach like, oh my God, that was crazy. That scene, and the only time I see my pops laugh, you remember the Roadrunner and Coyote? When that motherfucker falls off that cliff every episode, my, my dad can't take that. I don't know why he finds that so funny. He'd be like, yo, he's falling off the fucking cliff again. It's ridiculous. Listen. 
That man. reminds me of my dad who always lost it when we watched that Ron Van Cleef movie when he was fighting that dude on the beach and he turned his head. <laughs> Drew, my dad lost it on that scene every time I put that movie on, man. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't we play that? We played it one time, yeah. Bro. <laughs> Yo. Do you know me and my brother and father, we laughed at that shit for three days? We saw it on a Friday night. We didn't stop laughing until Monday morning when he went to work and we went to school. My mom was like, come on, come on. It's not that funny. We was like, no, no. We had it on VCR. We kept rewinding it. He turned his head around. His shit was like this. He turned. Storm, are you looking for it? Please find it. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Oh my God. If y'all never I'm seen this scene, I, I, bro, bro, I couldn't take it, man. I couldn't take, yo, I could not take that scene. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm looking for it. Uh, what is that? Uh, it was the Black Dragon. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> the Black Dragon, boy. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> I think funny. I found it. I think I found it. Hold on a it, second. It, it, it's it's the end, right? <clears throat> Damn. He spun his head around, man. Oh my god. I can't find it, Drew. I found the movie, but I, I can't find the clip because we had the clip. Black Dragon. <laughs> Wait a minute. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Wait a, wait a minute. Was it Black Dragon or Black Dragon's Revenge? I think it's the Black Dragon's Revenge, or it's also known as the Death of Bruce Lee. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the scene right here. You got it? I got the scene right here. Yeah, I got to upload this real quick. because You know, oh. I got to get out of here. But wait yeah, a minute. Yeah. Hold on. I got it. No, no, no. We got to see this scene. You can see it? Hold on. I found it too. You want me to put it up? Because I got it right there. Go ahead. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> this shit is hilarious. Okay, hold on. Y'all gonna enjoy this. This shit is so hilarious, man. Hold on. You wanna share the screen? <clears throat> okay, get ready. Here we go. Check this out. Okay. <laughs> 
I know you gotta go, bro. I gotta go. <laughs> Much love and appreciation. I love this show. <laughs> Did you talk about that movie? Did you... <laughs> I can't, man. <laughs> All right, man. Bro. Peace to everybody out there. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. And we go, go man. <laughs> we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs>